Hi, and welcome to this uh, first video in a series of basic tutorials on FreeCAD. Uh, now, I'm not going to take you through downloading and installing and whatnot. Uh, I think it's pretty basic and yeah, yeah, self explanatory. Um, just go and get the version uh, from the FreeCAD website that is appropriate to your operating system and install it. Now, one thing to mention though is if you've got a 32 bit version of Windows, for example, get the 32 bit version. Don't try getting the 64 bit version to work on a 32 bit computer because it won't. Um, so, like I said, this is going to be a, a basic. Um, series of tutorials and I apologize in advance if this first one's going to be a bit droll and boring and I'm you're going to get sick of my voice droning on um, but it's uh, yeah this is this is a sort of introduction to the user of the face uh, in this first video um, so let's get started when you first open uh, FreeCAD up it's going to look pretty much like this um, this is the start page, um, and it's possible to get FreeCAD to start up in one of the other pages, but that's preferences. That might be um, a later tutorial. We'll see how we go. Um, on the start page, you've got uh, a list of recent files, and as it's saying here, you can adjust the number of files that you show on this pane by going and editing preferences. Uh, you've also got some examples, um, architectural drawing, uh, a basic uh, 3D model here, some 2D stuff, and something a little bit more involved. This is finite element modeling. You can open these examples up and play around with them and um, whatnot. Um, and you can't really blow it all apart with this. Just uh, if you get completely lost and you don't know what you've done and you want to go back and start again, just close the, the model. Don't save it. Uh, open it again and you'll be back where you started. Uh, we also have a help panel here, uh, which gives you access to the general documentation for, for FreeCAD. Um, we have documentation here on the workbenches that you have installed. Um, so you can actually install a large number of workbenches. I'll get onto workbenches in a minute. Over here we also have access to the FreeCAD uh, community forum. And if you get completely lost and you just cannot figure something out when you, know, you read through the documentation and and uh, you still can't uh, quite figure out what's what's going on you can ask a question on the forum and uh, somebody will hopefully give you a an answer that will help you uh, the activity tab here uh, is really mostly for developers it gives you um, the access to uh, the, the GitHub page, um, you can view commits and whatnot on there. Um, most average users are probably not going to be um, all that interested. Um, let's just quickly change that back there. Right, so the elements on screen here. Before I start that though, I'll, uh, a quick uh, rundown on how to use the mouse to move things around. So if you click and hold the scroll wheel on your mouse, you can pan the model around, move it up and down, left and right, all over the place. If you click and hold the scroll wheel and then click and hold the right mouse button, that will now allow you to rotate. And if you click and hold the scroll wheel and then tap the right mouse button that allows you to zoom. You can also zoom by rotating the scroll wheel. Um, another little point here if uh, you know, you're in here somewhere and it's rotating about somewhere really strangely and oh, you can't quite you know, get it to, to play along, if you highlight say a, a point like that and then tap the, um, the scroll wheel, the, um, the scroll wheel button, um, it'll now rotate about that point. So that's just a, a quick one on on the mouse. So just to recap, if you click the scroll wheel and hold it, you can pan. If you click the scroll wheel, hold it, and hold down the right mouse button, you rotate. 
if you click and hold the scroll wheel and then just tap the right mouse button you can zoom and you can also zoom with the scroll wheel itself. Alrighty, so now that we've uh, had a bit of a look at how the mouse works, let's start uh, up here in the top left corner with the um, the menus uh, that drop down up here. So of course we've got the normal file menu where you can create a new file, um, open an existing file, um, save your model, um, give it a new name. Um, you can also create a copy of it. Um, you can import and export parts. You can print it or print a view, uh, export PDFs and of course exit the program itself. Um, we have um, various you know, like view menu that allow you to um, you know, change the, the view from say perspective to orthographic. Um, various tools and the, the tools of these menus change with uh, with the, uh, the workbench you're in and again I'll get into workbenches in a second. Um, you can also select different windows so from here like that and you can also um, select those windows from these tabs down the bottom. Um, you can have multiple models open and then select quickly select between them using these tabs. Um, below that oh, there's also a help menu here um, uh, with uh, links to uh, the Python scripting documentation, um, FreeCAD forum and whatnot. I think that for particularly for the beginning user this page here, this help page here it's probably going to be easier to use than the help menu from up here, mainly because you can go straight to um, the the thing that you're trying to find out about from here. Your mileage may vary, of course. So below that uh, menu, uh, those menu buttons, the uh, drop-down menus, we have a um, macro uh, bar. I don't use macros. Uh, so I won't really go into them. Uh, macros allow you to record operations and play them back. So if there's a particular thing that you do a lot, um, you can create a macro for it and then just pick that macro and play it. Below that we have the view tools. So the first one here is fit to window. And if you get, you know, you can bring it back. If you get, you know, so completely lost and you... You don't know where the, the model's gone to. You just click on that, that'll bring it back. Um, we also have the various um, standardized views. So we have an isometric view, a front, top, side view, bottom, um, back, and um, other side view here. Uh, these view, the, these are these standard views also appear over on the view cube here on the top right hand corner. So you can select, say, the front. You can rotate around um, in either direction. You can also uh, rotate in 45 degree increments as well. Uh, it's like like so. Next to the, uh, the view cube tools, we have a ruler, and that'll allow you to measure a distance. The only problem with that is it's going to measure from the two places where you clicked. If you actually want to measure that dimension between, say, those two lines, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, one is to uh, use the one of the measurement tools in one of the workbenches and the other one is to pick say that point and that point and that'll give you the measurement between those two points and you know those two points are right on the corner of the thing you're interested in so that's the actual dimension that you're looking for um, to the 
right of that we have the workbench selector and I'll talk a little bit more detail about that actually I'll, t I'll do that now so this allows you to change between workbenches uh, workbenches are a collection of tools um, that uh, allow you to do certain things more quickly workbench for example this may take a little bit to load here we go allows you to create walls and put doors and windows and whatnot in them um, that's a lot easier to do things that way than to use say the part design workbench um, which allows you to draw basic shapes um, you have a part bench here that part, part workbench allows you to create basic primitive shapes like cubes cylinders spheres um, tubes and whatnot um, and then manipulate them in in various ways the most uh, commonly used one uh, workbench is the part design workbench and that's the part design workbench that I'm going to be concentrating on uh, in this tutorial series so we're looking at part design uh, we'll look at the sketcher as well and we'll use uh, tech, tech draw towards the end of the series um, you'll notice that as I um, the workbench these tools all change as well that's because those tools are the tools that belong to the workbench and they're specific to that workbench uh, over here on the left side we have uh, the combo view and the combo view has two tabs the tasks tab and the models tab now the model tab has two um, useful parts the um, I'll just remove those for a second because they're a bit untidy rightio so we have uh, here a list of the parts these are parts so those yellow yellow, yellow stair steppy things are called parts these are the parts that go up to make up the whole plasma table inside each one of these parts you can put other parts or you put bodies this is a body um, and I'll go into the definite the differences and how you use parts and bodies in uh, the next tutorial but uh, for the moment you just need to know that that's what these things are called uh, when you look into a um, a body you find that the bodies are made up of these uh, all these are operations so um, you know pads which is uh, um, a thing that uh, turn a thing in a sketch into a three-dimensional object um, pads made up of a sketch and so on and this basically is like the history of that body the things that you've done to it to make the body as it finally appears um, the other interesting point with um, with this uh, this pane is you notice that down here we have these properties so you have for example the location of that body um, its position its uh, angle you also go into uh, each time you select one of these operations for example you get the information about it so you, and you can actually modify the information about these things right here as I was saying earlier uh, FreeCAD is a parametric modeling program and what that means is that you can um, go back in later on and alter those parts because those parts are defined by um, you know lengths and angles and and diameters and whatnot um, and you know, that's a very useful thing so for example if you find that you created a 20 millimeter bolt and then the thing that the bolt screws into gets thinner because you've changed it now the bolts too long it needs to be 15 millimeters long well that's easy to do you go into the bolt um, you know, your, your bolt body um, pick the pad that the bolts made of open the sketch up change the dimension that the, the length dimension to 15 millimeters and it automatically updates so it's all good to go uh, the tasks pane 
um, it depends very much on what you're doing at the time. In this case, I've just clicked on this measurement uh, icon up here, and now I can I can create a a measurement between um, two parts, and you can barely see it there. See the 1300. Um, but this tasks panel uh, gives me all the operations that I can now do with that measurement. So. Once you finish with that, just close it. Um, I'll uh, have a quick uh, play with um, the sketcher, for example. If we open a sketch, now you can see that the task pane has a different set of information because this information pertains to sketching, not measuring. So that's quite useful too. So this task pane. Um, I think that's pretty much uh, it for now. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments, and I'll uh, I'll, I'll probably address them in a future video. Um, this one's been a little bit long-winded and a little bit boring, and I apologise for that again. Um, the next one's going to be a, be a bit more interesting. I'll actually start going through the part design workbench and creating sketches and creating parts. Um, and I think the next next few videos will be a bit shorter than this one because um, I'll break it up into um, much smaller segments. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, this video. Uh, I hope it's informative for you. Um, yeah, and. Uh,